back and we are joined this morning by a well-known face. Of course, we have uh, Alan Usher with us who uh, served as the first aide for Dame Minita Gordon or first governor general. And uh, we're so happy that you decided to uh, participate in this conversation as we wanted to put into perspective uh, our first governor general's life and the work that she did. So good morning, Alan. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Marlene. Good to, good to be on the air with you again. Uh -huh. All right. So let's talk about your time as the aide de camp working along with uh, former Governor General Deminita Gordon. What was your experience like, both from a personal and a professional point of view? Well, it, it was actually a wonderful um, experience. And um, just to put a little background, an aide de camp is, is actually a, um, is a military officer assigned to a high ranking official, um, basically, as it says, to aid and, and, and provide, make sure meetings are set up, make sure um, the, the, the principal knows where he's going, etc. Um, I took over aide de camp duties from Tom Greenwood who was um, aide de camp to the, gov the, to the British governor at the time. So I took over from Tom Greenwood, and I have also the, the dubious honor of being the last ADC for the British governor. Um, on the lead up to the, the um, independence, I was told that the decision of a governor general is not yet um, announced, mm -hmm. and that I should attend all the meetings um, on, on behalf of the, the, the Governor General's office, taking notes and, and find out where the Governor General is to go and what time to show up and what time and, and everything. So for the weeks leading up to the independence, that is what I was doing. We already knew that Her Majesty would be represented by the um, Prince Michael of Kent. And um, actually, I was working out of the governor's office at that time, taking notes, preparing for the, that, that announcement of, of the, the Belize's first governor general. Um, when it came some days before, I think the Independence Day was the 21st, which was a Monday. And I think it must have been the Friday or the, the Saturday. I found out um, who the governor general was. Obviously, um, I had never met the, the, the lady before. I, I found out where she lived, and um, straight away I went across to her house on, on Plough Street and made, and made an uh, initial, initial uh, meeting and told her who I was and what I was doing. And by then I already had my, my notes all typed up. Uh, this is before computers. <laughs> and um, started to brief her on basically the, the, the program. Yeah. That that will take place over the, the next the next coming days. Um, I could still think back. That was a very long, very very long weekend. Um, the, the Saturday, the Sunday, and leading up to the, the the Monday. Very very long weekend. We had delegates arriving from all over the world. Um, there were um, lo lots of things to arrange, and um, it, it was quite busy. And at that time, she was, in fact, already a very accomplished woman. Yeah, yes, indeed. That, that's when I found out. I, I was looking at the, the CV um, that Ms. Shanish had sent, sent across the CV last night. And I remember sitting down. That was one of the things we had to do. We sat there. I think it must have been a Saturday afternoon in, in her sitting room. And she gave me her bottom date of birth and, and, and what school she went and, and what she had. So the, the first um, bio, the first CV that was produced was actually my handwritten notes that I took back up to the BDF. Oh. That, that, um, we, we managed to type out and able to, to give people like um, GIS, Government Information Service, and, and, and like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Um, then I realized that there was a, a person like that um, in Belize, somebody that had really at that stage uh, accomplished quite a lot in terms of, of service to the um, education effort of Belize, mm -hmm. as well as, as um, abroad, both in Britain and Canada. Yeah. Um, 
um, get, getting getting qualified, re- really really well qualified in the terms of, um, of of well specifically focusing on education. Yeah. Well, that's that's where I first met um, the former governor general because my dad had received the scholarship to study in Canada through her. And that, that's, that's how our familiarity with her grew. Um, share with us her personality. I mean, working closely with someone over a period of time, you get to know how they are on a day-to-day basis. What was that like? Well, I think she, she was a very intense, intense person, very analytical. Um, I guess when you do um, PhD studies, Mm-hmm. That, that's what you get get hammered, hammered into you is that um, you, you you you're analytical about everything, and um, it was really a wonderful working experience. Of course, I I had I was in a teaching mode at that stage. Um, you know that the, the fellow standing in front of the bunch of soldiers is a is a major. That that rank is what that rank is, and the guy with the one stripe is a is a lance corporal, and there's there's. Uh, a full guard is is 96. The flag to the middle of the the parade is is the colours. Um, <laughs> it, it, so there's a there's a whole new world that that she was going into. Obviously, public administration. She would have had that experience from working in the in the Ministry of Education and indeed the Education Department. But going in on understanding the military, understanding the functions of the state, was obviously a new experience, which she. Um, picked up quickly. Um, from a personal point of view, I think she, if you go earlier into her background, um, she is first born in Belize of Jamaican immigrants. Okay. And so she grew up in rural Belize, I think um, up in the, the Mascal St. Anne's uh, village area was where she spent her, her early childhood. And basically she fought her way up through the education system, well, work-wise and uh, school-wise, to achieve um, a, a doctorate level. Okay. So she knew the value of hard work. She knew the value of paying attention. She knew the valor, value of putting her all into something. And I think what irritated her the most was when she received um, um, mediocre mediocre work. You have um, various levels of people working within government. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the big criticisms was that she was changing her public service um, um, assigned um, staff um, too quickly. And basically, she wanted people to pay attention to the job. She wanted people to do their best. There's no reason why a whole lot of people cannot just simply do their best, pay attention and do their best. And I think that is what irritated her the most. Um, and really she demanded perfection. She demanded um, the, the, the best from everyone. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that was the, the, the biggest part of her frustration. Um, on the other side, um, Belize being a newly independent country, um, people were not accustomed to standing up for the anthem. Everyone knew God Save the Queen, which was the, up, which was the anthem up until the, the, um, the, the 20th of, of September. Mm-hmm. But come the morning of the 21st, um, when the flag was raised the first time, and the Belize National Anthem played as the Belize Anthem for the first time ever, um, after that, people... As I keep mentioning people paying attention. Mm-hmm. I guess people, we, we had to coax people to stand up for, for the Belize anthem. And then so it began. Um, teaching nature, nationhood, insisting on perfection, and Belize coming out of that infancy and, and growing up to become um, a country so many years later. She was also, I believe, the, the only female representative for the Queen at that time. And uh, given the fact that Belize was newly independent, how significant, I mean, how did people view the role of Governor General and specifically of uh, Dame Gordon? Well, it, 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 it's, it's a straightforward role, really. The head of state of, of Belize 
as it remains within the Commonwealth, is Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. um, and she is represented by a Belizean-born person. Um, it's the same system that uh, exists today in Canada and Australia and New Zealand and several other countries, uh, and Jamaica, and several other countries in the world maintain the, the same system. Um, some people find it hard. Um, there's, a, there's still a, a very strong anti-colonial sentiment um, within Belize. Uh -huh. And um, some people find it hard to accept that there is a, a, a distant head of state represented and, and, and all that. Um, basically, Belize is a small state. Um, the first question when um, there's talk about replacing the head of state with a Belizean president, for example, is one where we have to change the constitution as well, because um, the two systems in the world, there's a, there's a parliamentary system and there's a republican system, mm -hmm. and it's either one or the other. Yes, people have tried to, to change um, or, or use a, a mixture, a mixture of both. But basically, the, the, the two. Well, there's a third system, but we won't go into that. Mm -hmm. But basically, there are two systems, one or the other. I would liken a, a country's a, a, a small democracy that stays within the Commonwealth. I would liken it to uh, the, the grandparents looking after. The, 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 um, the, the grandchildren, they're not yeah. they're responsible for the grandchildren, but if there's abuse or there's neglect, the grandparents would step in. And I think we've seen that happen across the, 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 the um, Commonwealth landscape over the past, um, well, within recent history. There's some countries that um, had digressed to human rights abuses and, and um, other um, unconstitutional activity like like um, suspending elections and and extending terms of office and and the, and, and that is where the, the Commonwealth of Nations uh, would come in and say hey look uh, your constitution say that you have to have elections your constitution say that you can't lock up people without a trial yeah. there are sanctions that were put on some some countries until they came back in line basically respecting the basic human rights of, of the people that live in these countries yeah. so i think there's a lot to gain there's a lot to gain there's a lot to 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 um uh, as a small democracy um with, with, to, to remain within the Commonwealth, and indeed, the the respect that the office of the Governor General carries with it, and I think the Minita was was superb in that regard because she insisted on the the adherence to the the principles of the Constitution, mm -hmm. and she insisted on 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 excellence. Yeah. So everything that that her office did, everything that came out of my support for that office had to be right and proper and, and to the regulations and there's no making it up yeah. as we go along, what um, were some as, of, we, as we've yeah. seen ha, ha, has happened. Yeah. What were some of yes. her areas of passion um, that, that she had particular interest in? Yeah, what I found intriguing, she showed me one day, she said, um, let me show you, and she pulled out a box and she had carved leather. Um, <laughs> At, um, apparently in Canada, at some point, she attended a, um, a, a leather carving course mm -hmm. and um, picked it up. And um, that, that was her hobby. She, she, she carved leather. And um, so I, I thought that that was, that was it. She liked her plants. There's a whole, I don't know if there's still a um, floral society. Or, or what it was called, but occasionally I would attend um, tea parties. I was the only male person there. <laughs> I was dressed up, dressed up with my um, gold, gold ribbons and stuff like that. Yeah. And having ten, there's a whole bunch of people talking very excitedly about plants and flowers, flowers and plants, and they, they got cuttings from this one and they managed. To say. So she was into her plants. She was into her um, leather, leather carving. And she spent a lot of her alone time um, doing doing those crafts. You know, as as an aide de camp, you get exposed to the governor general in a way that the public doesn't. We we would only see them for public appearances. Um, what do you think is one of the things that people really didn't know about her? Whether it's a personality or character traits, what 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 are those things that you you'd like them to know now in her passing? 
I think I think a lot of people, uh, well, in the early stages, were still accustomed to a governor. The governor would appear, and and a new one would come, and the old one would go, and he's up there in the clouds, up there in the clouds somewhere. And um, the, our, our governor general was really a people people's person at heart. She had a, a, a passion for the for, for for women. She was a very strong advocate of uh, women women affairs and and, uh, and and children. She was very very um, concerned that that children should go to school and children children should have. Um, what they need to have to, for, for again to, to ex- ex- achieve um, excellence. So I think um, some people would have looked at her as a formidable uh, person, but really in her heart she had the the concerns and the interests of of um, the 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 the, um, the most defenseless of our society, and that is actually the, the children. And, and and women 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 that have suffered some abuse and and um, like that so really she was a, a people's a people's person and what's the one memory that you always share of the time you spent being her aide de camp what is the one the one memory that you always share oh I don't know there uh, there are lots I, I think back I, I was saddened and uh, actually I, I wasn't able to I know she has um, Probably no family left in Belize. Her, her parents are long gone. Um, I, I don't know of any. I had met a sister once, and I want to express my my condolences for the for the loss of Damonita. And also, um, I know she has a lot of friends. Um, long, long after I used to meet her, she she would walk from where she lived in in Newtown Barracks down to Belize City shopping. She didn't have a car after she retired. And um, she would walk to downtown Belize um, city and shop and walk along the seaside going back home. And many times I'd stop and, and talk to her. She didn't want to lift. She walked for the exercise. And um, so, so uh, after she retired, and indeed after I retired, um, um, I, I maintained, maintained the contact with her. Um, even if it was just a casual, a casual um, uh, uh, meeting on the on the seaside you know yeah but, um transferring her off one of our video patrol craft into a small boat in the rough waters i think it was um barranco i think we're, t- we're taking her to barranco one time wow. and um i had to set up the whole trip at the time the bdf had a big 65 foot um, patrol boats and we were had anchored off barranco and it was very rough there was some <laughs> Four foot waves, and we had to transfer uh, Her Excellency from the patrol boat into a smaller boat and go to um, go ashore. And she was all dressed up with her um, o- official um, garments, and um, the, the transfer was um, intense. But she enjoyed it. Um, a little bit of salt water is always good. <laughs> I, think, I think it was a, it was a, not quite a grey morning. It wasn't raining, but the sea was very rough off, off Barranco. And we transferred her off the, the, the big boat into a little boat and bounced, bounced ashore. And when we got there, she put on back her, her shoes and, and hopped onto the dock. And away we went, right? Yeah. So I think that that would be one of the one of the um, memorable memorable events. All right. um, the well, royal visit, the royal visit, the first royal visit was very intense. It was the first time Her Majesty the Queen was visiting in in 1985, and um, first time visiting Belize, and and that took a lot of work, a lot of, of, of preparation. Um, that that's. Um, that would be the topic of another. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely uh, want to get that backstory as well. But we appreciate uh, you sharing just these tidbits of your experience as the aide de camp of Dame Manita Gordon. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you very much and stay safe. Okay, ma'am. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Right. Bye-bye. And with that, we are going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, when we come back, it'll be for a COVID-19 update. 
as we talk with uh, Dr. Jorge Hidalgo about what year two of the COVID-19 pandemic may look like.